you. And I will say a few words to introduce our first introducer, who swears that I told him he had three hours, and so he's busily cutting out the 27 pages in between. Bill Elmore is general partner of Foundation Capital. He founded Foundation Capital in 1995 with the purpose of helping entrepreneurs build strong organizations from the ground up. Prior to that, he spent eight years as a general partner at Inman and Bowman. Previous roles include president of visual engineering, as well as a variety of marketing management positions at Hewlett Packard. As former director and past president of the Western Association for Venture Capitalists, past director of the National Venture Capital Association, Bill is actively involved in representing the interests of the venture capital and private equity industries. He holds a BSEE and MSS, MSEE from Purdue, as well as an MBA from Stanford. Bill? Thanks, Susan. I'll try and set a standard for short introductions. I'm here to introduce uh, Herman Hauser, um, a serial entrepreneur and co-founder of Amadeus Capital Partner, Dr. Herman Hauser, CBE has wide experience in developing and financing companies. So what is this CBE thing? Because Herman lives in Cambridge, England. Well, for those of you, I, so I wasn't sure what CBE was, so I called one of my friends, a professor, over in the UK today, and he said, CBE, I think you have to go see the Queen to get one of those. <laughs> and sure, sure enough, uh, the commander of the British Empire is a title just below knight, that you get for extreme contributions to the UK. So we have our CBE here with, her, with us tonight. Uh, Herman grew up in the, in the Tyrol in Austria, in the Austrian Alps, and was educated in Austria and England, uh, MA in physics from Vienna uh, University, PhD in physics from Cambridge. He's co-founded many, com many companies, uh, but uh, in uh, the late 70s, he co-founded Acorn Computer, one of the very first PC companies, and later on, Arm Computing, was spun out of Acorn. Uh, uh, Herman also was the Vice President of Research at Olivetti for many years. Some of the companies Herman's been involved with include Acorn, Arm, Active Book, Verata, uh, Cambridge Network Limited, Cambridge Silicon Radio, the Bluetooth company, and Tropic Research, which is a voice recognition company, Selexa, ultra high put, uh, throughput DNA uh, sequencing, and then um, uh, Plastic Logic is the current company. I'm on the board of XMOS, a semiconductor company with Herman. So um, a few other awards, you can read the long list in your, uh, in your, uh, in your brochure, but uh, he's a fellow at the Institute of Physics in the UK and the Royal Academy of in Engineering and an honorary fellow of King's College. And uh, of course, he was awarded an honorary CBE for, quote, innovative service to the UK enterprise sector. Herman's Austrian by birth, so he speaks German, English, Italian, French, a few other non- um, uh, extinct European languages. <laughs> and thanks to his wife, Pamela, he also speaks Kiwi. <laughs> Herman Hauser. Well, thank you, Bill, for this very kind introduction. <clears throat> I'm truly humbled to uh, receive a visionary award in the cradle of visions here in Silicon Valley as a, as a European uh, or an Austrian or what I'm particularly proud of as a Tyrolean. Uh, I thought I'd just share my sort of vision and passion for the future with you, which is uh, uh, low-power computing. And if I can just, uh, if you uh, will allow me to start with an anecdote on how this vision came about, and then I'll spend just a little time to tell you where I think this vision is going, because I think we've got a very long way still to go. So the origin of this vision is actually ARM. And uh, few people know why the ARM exists at all, and this is the story. Uh, we needed a new microprocessor, <coughs> because the microprocessor we were using was the 6502, the same processor that powered the Apple II. It was an 8-bit processor, and it just wasn't powerful enough. So we went to see all the microprocessor vendors in the world. We quite liked the National Semiconductor, 16032. Uh, and we ended up at Intel uh, with the 8286 and said, um, you've got quite an interesting processor there. Uh, you just screwed up the pinout. Uh, nobody can make a sensible computer with your chip uh, because you have both the uh, 
uh, address bus and the data bus on the same pins, uh, and anybody who knows anything about computing will tell you that uh, this doesn't work very well. Uh, but if you sell us the, the, the die, maybe you know, we can do our own pinout and we can make something of this chip. And they said, get lost. And we said, well, you get lost, we'll do our own. <laughs> and that is the reason why the ARM exists. I then gave two advantages to uh, the ARM design team that neither Intel nor Motorola nor National Semiconductor ever managed to give to their design teams. And these two advantages were, number one, I gave that team no people. So it's the only microprocessor in the world that was designed by two people, uh, Sophie Wilson and Steve Ferber. Now, they're two geniuses, but it was just two of them. The other advantage I gave them was no money. <laughs> so the only way they could build this uh, processor, which they were absolutely passionate about, was to keep it really, really, really simple. And the uh, result was a processor that was the smallest processor at the time. In fact, it had the same number of transistors as the most successful 8-bit processor, the Z80. But it had a performance that was 20 times that of the Z80. So the architectural breakthrough, the, the, the amazing architectural breakthrough, is just seen in that, in that 20x number, which very quickly, in that one fell swoop, made us the world leader in um, MIPS per watt. Nobody cared about MIPS per watt at the time. <laughs> you see where I'm going? <laughs> Except for one little company in um, Finland called uh, Nokia. And they said, this, this is exactly what we've been looking for for many years. Uh, this gives us a lot of processing power uh, for little battery power. And with the adoption of uh, ARM, the ARM architecture by Nokia. This then followed uh, the rest of the, the the rest of the industry followed, and now we have a 95% market share of uh, microprocessors in mobile phones. Uh, last year, uh, we produced uh, more microprocessors than there are people on Earth, and in fact, uh, more processors than Intel has produced in its entire history. Uh, so uh, it's gone rather well, but what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't go with their design like you wanted to. What, uh, what, 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 what can we do next? Uh, well, as a theoretical physicist, uh, you try to find out where the limits are. So where are the limits in terms of uh, making computing low power? So I researched this a bit and came across a, a guy called Fredkin, who proved in the 50s, he was an IBM researcher, that computing doesn't need to consume any power at all. And this looked like a bit of a counterintuitive uh, result, but it is true. If you do computing, as long as it is re reversible, you can do computing without any power consumption at all. So you see, there is still a long way to go. So what are the steps towards that ideal goal of, if not no power, so minimal power uh, going forward? Well, the secrets are uh, in design uh, goals that have eluded us for a very long time. They have to do with low processing speeds, uh, not gigahertz, but kilohertz, but great parallelism and asynchronous uh, design. So that's what uh, I'm uh, looking forward to working with, and Exmos, this processor that uh, I'm working together with, Bill Elmoran, solves the, uh, uh, the low uh, frequency parallelism program and we hope to have asynchronous versions of that sometime. So thank you very much.